Tonight, from San Francisco's newest night spot, Wolfgang's, it's a Comedy Tonight special featuring A. Whitney Brown. There's a lot of nice things in the world, but I don't think anything's as sweet as the way your kids look up to you. Just to hang around somebody who thinks that you can make anything stop hurting just with a kiss, somebody who thinks that you can do anything, that is a sweet feeling. I know I should probably tell her who really made the trees and the sky and the ocean. <laughs> I don't want to break her heart, you know. Leslie Rickard. Hi, this is Barry White from Masterpiece Theater. Oh, baby, baby, we got to play for you this week. He's black. He's bad. He's a fellow. And Mark Pitta. My car shows that my car has a dent on the side, one in the rear. You know, it's got rust on the top. You know, the only thing I'm not worried about is theft with this car. You know, in fact, I have a talking alarm. If somebody breaks in, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> you broke into this car? <laughs> Go ahead, take the cigarette letter as our gift. That's yours, okay? Bennett here on Comedy Tonight. And first up, a man who started his career by working out of a circus wagon and later became one of San Francisco's finest street performers. He's appeared on the David Letterman Show in Thick of the Night. He's a former torch juggler who's now become a master of stand-up comic and a former winner of the San Francisco Comedy Competition. Ladies and gentlemen, A. Whitney Brown. Hey, I'm A. Whitney Brown. Someday I hope to be the Whitney Brown. <laughs> Feeling great tonight? It's been a rough month. I had to move this month. Yeah, it's a drag. It was my own fault, though. I put my house up for sale. And my landlord found out about it. <sighs> you find out things when you move. You find out who your friends are. I mean, your real friends, the ones with trucks. <laughs> you gotta have friends to help you move. Last time I moved, I had no friends, no car. I had to move on the bus. <laughs> Very humiliating. But I got a new address. That's good news. It means I can join the Columbia Record Club again. <laughs> Get those 13 albums up in front. <laughs> then tell them I died. They hate that. <laughs> Threatened to ruin my credit last time I did that. Ruin my credit. <laughs> I wrote him a letter. I just said, ooh. <laughs> I'm sure all the higher financial institutions in the nation always check with them. I'll be in the bank trying to stake down a mortgage someday. Oh, Mr. Brown, you qualify in every other way, but it says here in our files you didn't get the record of the month in September. <laughs> yes, I got them all. The record club, the book clubs. The book club doesn't mess around, though. They got even. Sent my name to the Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> Sent them a fake letter signed by me saying I wanted to be saved. <laughs> Five of them showed up. Tried to gang save me on my front porch. <laughs> I didn't believe, though. I've been a cynic since I was eight. I'm not bitter, no, just a little cynical. Got burned pretty badly on that Santa Claus story. <laughs> no, no, I'm not bitter about all the nights I waited up for that fat dork to come down the chimney. <laughs> Reindeer prints on the roof. Almost broke my buns up there looking around. I'm not bitter about the fact that all the grown-ups were laughing at me the whole time because I had a shred of faith left, and I invested it in that true and beautiful thing in this veil of tears, the tooth fairy. <laughs> I believed in that tooth fairy. 
used to pull out my brother's teeth when I was broke. <laughs> but that childhood illusion came to an end, shattered with all the other sweet fantasies of youth. I was nine, and one of my teeth was loose. Wasn't really ready yet, but I needed a quarter pretty bad at the time. <laughs> Probably was all out. <sighs> Well, he had a couple of molars left, and you know how hard those are to get out. So I pulled the tooth, the old string on the doorknob, put it under the pillow, and woke up in the middle of the night. There was my father standing there with his hand right under the pillow. I figured the tooth fairy had been there already, and he was ripping me off. So I bit him. A few more teeth to put under the pillow the next night. I love animals. They love me for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm a vegetarian. It's not because I love animals, though. It's because I hate plants. I like to eat them. I like to walk on them. Burn them. Just smoke them. I'm just mean. But I don't hunt. I think it's cruel. Besides, plants are a lot easier to sneak up on. <laughs> well, I think it's cruel to go out in the woods with a gun and shoot down our four-footed brothers, some deer, two-year-old deer, just for primitive instinct's sake. I have other ways of getting out of my frustrations. Cut down my own Christmas tree every year. <laughs> no, no two-year-old spike buck for me. Take a little baby pine tree that took 10 years to grow. Got a 73-pointer this year. <laughs> Stalked him for four hours. <laughs> Hacked him out of the ground. Got him home, he was still alive. <laughs> well, let's have a little fun with Mr. Tree. Put him in water so he wouldn't die too quickly. Then I put thumb screws into his little trunk. <laughs> Made him stand up straight the whole time. <laughs> then I got out the hot lights. <laughs> put these heavy balls on his branches. <laughs> See how long you can hold these up. <laughs> then I put silver tents all over him, make sure he couldn't escape. I mean, where is he going to go looking like that? <laughs> Back to the woods. Blend right in, won't you? It was the season to be jolly. He lasted for two and a half weeks. And I threw him out on the curb. My house plans were freaking out. Went to water my wandering Jewish. Get away, you Nazi. Get away from me. I saw what you do. Like I care what my house plants think. Bunch of house plants. Couldn't even make it in the wild. <laughs> they don't change their attitude. It made us be a little drought around the house. <laughs> <laughs> Trees are all right. They stand proud. Critters I feel sorry for. Well, I feel sorry for a lot of critters. Squirrels and possums, because they have such a hard time getting across the road. <laughs> I don't know why, but you see a lot of them out there. Squirrels have no excuse. They're smart, they're fast. Their flaw is they're indecisive. <laughs> I run all the way across, see a car. I know I made it, but just to be safe, I'll go back. The possum's fatal flaw is stupidity. <laughs> Any animal that would try to fake out a semi-truck by playing dead, <laughs> I don't know. Still carrying their babies around in pouches, for God's sake. This is the 80s. Stuff went out 40 million years ago. Get with it, Mr. Possum. But I feel sorry for dogs because they're not proud to be on this earth like all the other critters. They slink through life. They know they're just dogs. They're going to get old and fat and lay around and stink and have bugs all over them and little big piles everywhere. 
turn your neighbors into enemies and wake you up in the morning and just do their stuff right out in front of everybody. And... <laughs> Once in a while, though, you see a dog, forget he's a dog. Just be running across an open field, his mind back thousands of years ago before he was under that human thumb. Just dogging it across a field. That's when I love to watch him. So I can yell, bad dog! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot. Let me just do my stuff out here in front of you. Because what good are dogs? I have one. Got him as a watchdog. He watches me eat. Well, oh, he's good at it, yeah. Doesn't guard me from criminals. Doesn't want to get involved. What a dog. He's even afraid of the vacuum cleaner. Of course, that's partly my fault, I guess. <laughs> Here it is, Brownie, the suck monster. Under the bed, you can't hide. Remember what happened to the parakeet when I was cleaning his cage? One day he was really hungry. I poured him a bowl of dog food just before he got to it. I sucked it up with it right out of his bowl. <laughs> He'd never seen anything that could eat as fast as he could. Scared him to death. But he doesn't guard my house. If somebody broke in, he'd let him take it all. Very oh, I don't listen to it. I'm a dog. I don't appreciate things like that. Ah, don't touch that garbage can outside there. I'm gonna knock that over and roll in it tomorrow. <laughs> Guards the garbage with his life. I think that's a safe where we keep all the valuables. He then wakes me up at dawn when the garbage man comes, so I'll know we're getting ripped off. <laughs> The neighbor's garbage, too. You stay here. I'll go wake up all the other dogs in the neighborhood. <laughs> Thank you very much. Had a wonderful time. Comedians all have different shticks. Some are traditional stand-ups, uh, some have props, some musical instruments. Well, this comedian combines her improvisational and musical talents with a rarely seen musical accompaniment. She's appeared on HBO and on Nickelodeon. Originally, she's from Boston. She's now living in Los Angeles. Ladies and gentlemen, a great big comedy tonight. Welcome for Leslie Rickard. supposed to happen. My tube is tied. <laughs> it's here. The terribly terrific tuba by Generico. It crushes. It flushes. It's a basketball hoop. A decorative planter. It can be worn as an elegant brooch. It burps for you. It farts for you. It's a spittoon. A microwave dish. A paperweight and a snowblower. It even conveniently folds into your very own Honda Civic for easy traveling. Right now, our low price is only $22.50. That's right, only $22.50. Get your terribly terrific tuba today. Excuse me. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Oh no, not another female tuba player. Did you expect me to be fat? 
Because in the world of tuba players, I'm considered an anorexic. <laughs> I didn't want to pick this up, but uh, one night I went to bed with a trumpet player, and the next morning I woke up with this on my lip. <laughs> I wasn't sore, though, no. I've come to appreciate where the tuba has been through music history. You know, it's always been on the very, very bottom. Way back, the Germans highlighted the tuba with the oom pa pa bands. They didn't highlight the tuba. The tuba only got to play the ooms. Then, composers, they started writing themes to the characters in novels, and so the tuba seemed the logical choice for the dwarfy, fat, ugly trolls. <laughs> yeah, but nowadays, the tuba has the high honor of playing the sound of Fred Flintstone's elephant vacuum cleaner. <laughs> when it sneezes. <laughs> Another cartoon character whose theme is played only on the tuba is Snidely Whiplash, that dastardly villain. And finally, the most villainous villain of all villains in villainy. <laughs> <laughs> scary, huh? You know, it's not as scary as the day I woke up and realized how obsessed I am with this thing. Each morning, I wake up and squeeze blue gel out of a tuba toothpaste. <laughs> I'd now like you to, uh, to meet one of my best friends, Mr. Barry White. I love to hold you, baby, baby, baby. I love to feel you between my legs. I love to touch your love buttons. You are my spittoon of love. <laughs> what if Barry White was the host of a popular television show? <laughs> Hi, this is Barry White from Masterpiece Theater. Ooh, baby, baby, we got a play for you this week. <laughs> He's black. He's bad. He's a fellow. Hi. I'd just like to uh, do one last thing, which is my imitation of Joan Rivers not saying a single word. <laughs> Playing comedy clubs in New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Canada has made this comedian one of the best around. He's appeared on Showtime and most recently on the nationally syndicated program Star Search. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to our stage the very funny Mr. Mark Pitta. You guys are in a good mood tonight. I actually would be, but I broke up with my girlfriend last week. Or uh, she broke up with me. Have you ever been in a great relationship, but you're the only one that knows that? <laughs> I 
was with her eight months. I thought that was the best. Out of the blue, she says, Mark, I gotta tell you something. Um, I'm seeing another guy. Okay? All right. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but in that kind of situation, my hearing plays tricks on me. Because when she said, I'm seeing another guy, I thought she told me to pick up her favorite chair and throw it through the window. Like, what? <laughs> she said she was bored. I thought she said, break all my dishes, kill the dog, all right? <laughs> So I hate that you're used to someone, then you have to go to singles bars and meet new people. It's hard to meet bright people. One woman said her favorite movie was Star Wars, you know? So I asked her if she saw it in Dolby. She goes, no, um, Oakland. Um, <laughs> and don't you hate when you're unattached and you see these couples that talk to each other like people normally talk to puppy dogs? Do you know this type? It's like, you wanna go to movie with me? I love to go to movies with you. Oh, I go anywhere with you. Oh, you know. <laughs> Where's Dirty Harry when you need him? That's what I want to know. <laughs> the worst part is if you love somebody, then all of a sudden they're not in your life anymore. You go through that mending process where you have a broken heart. You know. Now this is when I can't go to the movies because I can't watch the love scenes in the movies when I'm in this mood, because all the characters seem to be telling me. Hey, Mark, remember this? <laughs> <laughs> so I stay home and watch Aerobis Eyes, and I'm okay. Uh, <laughs> and I think kissing is the most important thing in a relationship because it determines the length. If you go out with somebody and you have a great time, but they can't kiss, are you gonna see them again? Yeah. Ever kiss someone that thinks they're sitting in a dentist chair? <laughs> Do you know this time? It's like, good night, and they go. <laughs> see me twice a year, okay, thanks. <laughs> Let's use the gas next time we go out, okay? <laughs> yeah. I, I got the gas at the dentist the other day, and I never knew I was getting the long shot of Novocaine because I was out, you know. And what's funny is if you want more gas, you have to do something. What the dentist will do is he'll give you the gas, then go away for 20 minutes, right? Then he'll come up after that time, sneak up on your side, check you to see if you're ready by going. Now, more often than not, after you've had the gas, you're going to go. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I wanted more, so I gave my Academy Award winning performance. It was like, where have you been? Are you going to turn the machine on or what? You're kidding. You did? Oh, I feel a little uh, tingle. He went, gee. <laughs> little did he know, he was the Macy's Day parade dentist, 200 feet tall above me. Just like, whoa. Bullying over the drill. I don't know. <laughs> the only drawback to this, the more gas you've had, the number your mouth is the rest of the day. Don't have your picture taken when you've had this gas. It's like, smile. <laughs> yeah. mm. It's instance the best of Stallone. Smile. Mm. <laughs> My favorite films, however, are the, uh, the Westerns, the Clint Eastwood Westerns, you know? Because these are great. These are American actors, but they still had American voices dubbed in. Remember this? Like the guy gets off the horse and goes, Hey. Hey. Yeah, you. You're dead. I watched this for four hours. I was so affected by it, I couldn't help going to the corner after the show. Yo, taxi! <laughs> What's weird? This guy drives up and goes, yeah, or two.
Thank you. And um, <laughs> one of my favorite film stars was Elvis Presley. I just liked his movies, and it bugs me to see these headlines in the National Enquirer. The ghost of Elvis Presley is haunting Graceland. The wife and daughter have both seen him in the house. His old house, he's haunting his old house. What's Elvis gonna do now? What, hang around the hallways and go, hey, <laughs> Scared you, thank you very much. <laughs> he's dead, leave him alone, okay? <laughs> Here's something you'll never hear at a Catholic school. What are you wearing tomorrow? <laughs> oh, I gotta get back. Oh. <laughs> ba boom. <laughs> <laughs> but I did not go to a Catholic school. Let me get back to this. I went to a junior high school that is predominantly known for its drug abuse. I swear, at this school, they used to have zigzag paper drives at this school. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And I'll admit this, I smoked, I smoked one of those, uh, what do you call them, joints? And I did. And uh, all, it didn't affect me. All I did for four hours was watch television. That was it. I was like... That was it, and I remember the program, too. It was called Please Stand By. You ever see that? <laughs> so, it didn't affect me at all. <laughs> I watch a lot of commercials, and I know it's one thing about these things. Um, commercials are tailored to the type of audience they think are watching. Like, if you see uh, sports, what kind of commercials come on? Yeah, like, shaving and beer, and like soap operas, you see like, detergents and pampers. Then, then if you watch reruns of Dick Van Dyke and Leave it to Beaver, at two in the afternoon, you see commercials like, get off your butt, get a job, okay? <laughs> Look in the paper. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. the great Mark Pitta. Let's hear it for him. We want to thank A. Whitney Brown, Leslie Rickard, and Mark Pitta. And we'd like to thank Wolfgang, and especially you, for joining us tonight on Comedy Tonight. A lot of strange cults in this world. My grandmother belongs to one of them, the Baptists. <laughs> they believe if you hold someone underwater long enough, they'll come around to your way of thinking. <laughs> you know, if I reviewed movies, I'd tell the truth. I didn't like E.T. Because I don't like a movie that gets so popular, you go to the store and you see E.T. bedspreads. E.T. calendars, E.T. nightlights, E.T. mugs. I mean, you don't see Gandhi lunch pails, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on. Of course, you couldn't put any food in that one, but you don't see those. 